Hello everyone. So it's the first Sunday of the month and of May. It's Our Lady's Month. So I pray everyone is beginning this day in a positive and supernatural way. It's always good to remember that uh, while we have this COVID-19 that we're all dealing with and struggling with, we also have the guidance of the greatest of all masters, and that is Jesus who guides us through good and difficult times. So we are just a, a few things to mention. We are at 948 subscribers to our YouTube channel. So thank you to everyone who has signed up, but I know, I suspect there are some of you who are uh, joining us this morning for Mass, uh, united to this Mass who have not yet subscribed. So uh, kindly uh, do that, it's a couple of clicks away. Nine, we're at 948, so we only have 52 more. So there's gotta be 52 people out there. Uh, in the digital continent, which means real people, not just fake people, real people uh, who can subscribe. So a couple of clicks away. Uh, thank you to everyone who has given online uh, or is dropping off envelopes. It's very much uh, acknowledged and appreciated by myself and the staff here at Corpus Christi. And to be honest, it's important that um, it continues to happen. So thank you to everyone. Uh, the school is coming along really well, and for this we need to give a lot of thanks to God and continue asking Blessed Don Alvaro to keep our workers healthy, our materials arriving, because that's a critical component of all this, is the, um, the coming together of all the various uh, items or angles in the construction world, and if the materials are there, if things can go forward for the most part, if they're not, everything comes to a halt. So the health of the workers and the materials arriving on time, uh, these are the two critical things. And of course, that the weather continues uh, to be the way it is because uh, heavy downpours probably can bring it to a halt, but um, you know the, the, the weather has been just wonderful uh, during the time of the construction. And also, uh, as I mentioned to you in the past week, of uh, Richard, uh, Deacon Richard Condon is here, so I just want to uh, introduce him to those who already know him, but to those who may not know him, so I'll step aside and he can say hello. Hello, it's good to be with you. Uh, I'm keeping you all in prayer and I look forward to joining you one day in person. So until then, please pray for me for my transition here to Corpus Christi. So I'm very excited about uh, Deacon Richard being here. And uh, he's uh, definitely uh, raring to go. I think he's probably going to exhaust me with all of his ideas. Uh, but that's good. Uh, it's, we all need to be pushed beyond our boundaries. And uh, um, we both have a lot of ideas that we want to, uh, I guess, first put down on paper and then start prioritizing things and seeing what's possible and even perhaps what seems to be impossible and what can be made possible by the grace of God, um, even if it's over a period of time. So we all need to pray for him while he serves here at, as a deacon and God willing. Uh, within the year, um, he will be a priest helping me personally offer mass and uh, offering mass for you. So please keep him in your prayers uh, as I know you will. And so uh, we have a couple of minutes left uh, because mass is not going to start till 10. So just use this time as quiet preparation uh, asking Our Lady to help you enter into uh, the sacrifice of the Mass and to kind of really be at Mass uh, like she would have been at Mass, perhaps even in a way like she, would have, like she was at the foot of the cross, although she was suffering a great deal at the foot of the cross, uh, incomprehensibly suffering. But at the same time, she was uniting herself to the will of the Heavenly Father and her own Son. So she knew uh, with a certitude of faith that uh, to say great good would come of this is almost, it's almost insufficient. But she knew that great good would come of this uh, horrible event of his death on the cross. She knew that this would bring about many uh, children of God uh, being able to one day inherit eternal salvation. So even at the foot of the cross of this horrible moment, Our Lady had, there was, um, Perhaps beneath her, her, her tremendous suffering was also a great serenity and a great uh, union of her will uh, with God's will because she knew of the great good that could come from it. So in the next few minutes, just ask Our Lady to help you enter the 
a holy mass as she did, not only at the cross, but also the many times that she re undoubtedly received the Holy Eucharist throughout her life. So we have four minutes. Okay.
from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Jesus, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Christ bore himself Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and my own know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. Everyone needs encouragement these days. Everyone needs encouragement, period, but perhaps more so uh, during these times of the COVID-19 crisis reality. So whether it is a kind word, a voiced prayer, a good deed done, even if it's not uh, sort of one doesn't go out of one's way to make it uh, the other person aware that it's been done, an acknowledged or service done or helping the poor or first responders nowadays, perhaps even a virtual pat on the back type of thing. In whatever form it takes, encouragement is a good and needed thing. Uh, Barnabas, uh, one of the early apostles who are considered, he was certainly close to the apostolic band. Um, <clears throat> his name means son of encouragement. And so this is what he did throughout his life is he encouraged people. And many times in the gospel, it records our Lord uh, encouraging, be of courage, don't be afraid. Kind of the same, it's a little different take, perhaps different, a different angle on the same reality, but at, this, at the heart of encouragement is don't be afraid. So this is precisely what we find in today's readings. We're encouraged, but not in the usual or typical way that we might think. God, as we will see through the image of the good shepherd, consoles and strengthens us so that we can achieve the primary purpose of our life. And this is something we must always be aware of, that we have a purpose, we have a reason for existence, and it's not just because our mother and our father wanted a child or that a child came along, but our primary purpose is to reach heaven, is to attain eternal life. And without that purpose being fulfilled, what our Lord says in the gospel, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly, will mean zero nothing ultimately it will mean nothing we may have the happiness of the animal while we're here in this world but and and it's, i'm not trying to diminish or say those things are not important but if it's not sort of harmonized with and brought in line with the ultimate purpose of our life these things are very short-lived even though now sometimes they feel like they're going on forever and ever and ever and it's never going to end um you know sometimes the the downside of it the sorrows and so on but even the good things, maybe we feel like we're reading, uh, you know, riding, uh, cresting, uh, cresting a wave. And, you know, how long is this going to keep going? Even if it were to go every day, 24-7 for 110 years. So that would feel like a, a good long time. When it comes to an end, it feels like a blink of an eye. And we have to think a little harder about this because our tendencies affected by sin our fallen nature would have us think that this is everything, right? This is everything. This is the only thing to live for. When this will only truly mean something and will be truly fulfilled if we are able to experience this at its true uh, peak or height, if you know, to use an expression, in eternal life. So our good friendships will be truly uh, what they would have always been uh, had sin not entered the world and even raised to a higher level in the next life, in eternal life. So as we will see, uh, for true consolation to be given to be and to be received properly, something is required of both. And that something is not always easy. So this is my, there's so many angles one could take from this um, beautiful imagery uh, and the teaching that our Lord gives us uh, on this Sunday, which is called Good Shepherd Sunday, and it's Vocation Sunday as well. So in the gospel of the day, Jesus compares himself to not just any shepherd, but to the good shepherd, who is both shepherd and gate. Both are images that should encourage us, but also make us aware of what is required of the shepherd and those who respond to him. And Jesus calls himself the shepherd of his sheep. Why? <clears throat> well, in order to get a little bit... Um, of a fuller understanding of this and what, have, what would have been sparked in the minds of his listeners, especially this, the, the priestly class, is uh, we have to go back. We don't do the Old Testament readings during Easter season because 
the Easter season is the fulfillment of the Old, of the old Covenant. So we don't read from uh, the, the Old Testament. I mean, the Psalms are always part of the scriptural, the, the mass readings, but you know what I mean, like uh, from the prophets, Genesis, and so on. We don't do any of those readings in funerals or in weddings because we're in the Easter season, the fulfillment of all those, of all those readings. But we need to go back to Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 2 to 6. And the prophet Ezekiel speaking uh, for the Lord, or the Lord speaking to his people through Ezekiel, is chastising the corrupt shepherds who are basically fleecing the flock, not giving them proper teaching, not sacrificing themselves for their people, just basically looking out for themselves. God is obviously not only not impressed with this, but he condemns it in no uncertain terms. The scripture says, so they were scattered because there was no shepherd and they became food for all the wild beasts, heretics, false teachers, uh, the idolaters, and so on. That's my words, that's, but that's what, that's what the Lord is saying. My sheep were scattered, even though they were living in the same place, they could all be scattered because their minds are all over the place. They're not focused on the Lord of Israel. They were scattered, they wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill going to their little idols, you know, maybe, maybe physically up in the hills. My sheep were scattered all over the face of the earth with none to search or seek for them. So where's the shepherd leaving the 99 to go after the one? Where is the shepherd? You know, where are the shepherds going after the Zacchaeuses who are corrupt and stealing to bring them back to the fold? Where's the, uh, this, so this is what our Lord is saying to these people. The God of Israel is saying to his people. So God first levels the charge and then he says what he's going to do about it in verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, close quote. So the people of God are basically left standing alone, open to false teachers, the attraction of idols, the whole host of temptation, and the priests are basically doing nothing. Now, of course, this is not to say that every priest was like this, but the priests of that generation knew exactly who were the bad ones. Uh, because God never lets us off the hook so much that we, our conscience doesn't prick us, you know, and make us realize we're not living up to what we were supposed to live up to. So it's not to condemn every priest in that generation, but the majority seemingly were in this category. So God states that because he can no longer rely upon them, his people are becoming lost, discouraged, like sheep without a shepherd. Does that ring a bell? Somebody says this, the gospels? God himself will come to them. I myself, he says in Ezekiel, will come to his people. Now this was probably, even after this severe chastisement and condemnation, I suspect that it was probably uh, understood in some symbolic or spiritual way. Jesus is making clear, no, this is not to be understood symbolically or spiritually, but really. I am the Lord Sabaoth. That's what he's saying to these people. And don't kid yourself. Somewhere in the priests, they, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes, they kind of sense what he's getting at. They may be not the full reality, but they know he's not just talking, you know, symbolically or spiritually. <clears throat> uh, and there is that he's really there and so real that you'll find it impossible to accept without faith. Jesus is the God who spoke through Ezekiel and who is now here teaching his people, restoring hope and calling forth a new group of shepherds that will be after his own heart. <clears throat> and th that they will be like him who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. It should be the motto of every priest. I came not to be served. I don't know how you'd put that into a short Latin phrase, but it could be done, Latin's like that. Anyways. It is here that we should begin to see that this shepherd, who is the good shepherd, is going to keep us safe from thieves and bandits. And this will mean not just a conflict, but it will be an all-out battle to protect us and ultimately lay down his life for us. The connotations that, ought, that very quickly sort of come from this is this is not going to be sunning on the beach. All right, this is a conflict with the powers of darkness. Uh, and we know full well, uh, I'm probably jumping ahead of myself here, this has not always been lived out by even the priests of the new covenant. 
but that's, you know, it doesn't take away from our Lord's promise and the fulfillment of his promise to give us the church and good shepherds after his own heart. And it's, a, it's he is now the one against which we measure ourselves, and all we strive to live in harmony with or in union with him. So he's always there to kind of rein us in or pull us back or, you know, draw us to repentance and so on. So even this beautiful image of the good shepherd who takes care of us, teaches us, guides us, feeds us, is here in this world precisely because of those whom he wanted to do this in his name, but did not. And in fact, we're taking advantage of the sheep. So Jesus will wind up, as we all know, sacrificing himself for us and establishing his church the Catholic Church, and the priesthood that would be or is supposed to be after his own heart and giving an example of complete sacrifice. So this is a consoling and encouraging message, even though it may not, it's certainly not fluff, if you know what I mean. It's not like cotton candy, but it's, this is solid food. Uh, This is solid food that that, that will, if we can get past all the other stuff, uh, this is encouraging, this is an encouraging message that all of us really need, that we have such a leader, such an example that is willing to help us get through this world so that we might reach eternal life and who helps us to truly love the world, not be in love with the world, but to love the things that God has made in the world and to be thankful for this. So it's not a matter of dissing the world or, you know, just uh, disdaining all created matter or reality. Jesus teaches us how to use this properly. This medium is, is, a, is, a, is a blessing from the Lord, especially during these times. But we also know you can go into dark pits through the internet, you know, uh, that are really, really bad places. So this is where we all have to make solid decisions, concrete, healthy decisions that are going to help us get closer to him and not go some down some dark, dark, dark place, you know, in the internet. <clears throat> So this has to draw forth from us though a response and we are taught what that response is by no other than the first Pope, the first uh, St. Peter, who is really the Vicar of Christ. So the two things that are highlighted in today's first and second reading are the following. From the Acts of the Apostles, St. Peter teaches us in the name of Jesus Christ that we must repent of our sins. And then what does Peter say? Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. No, it's not what he says. That's what some of the so-called Bible Christians say he says. That's not what he says. What does the Lord, what does St. Peter say? This is coming right out of Pentecost. This man is full of the Holy Spirit. He is on fire for God. What does he say? Repent of your sins and be baptized so that our sins may be forgiven. So Jesus drives, or St. Peter drives us to the sacraments to the life of the church over which he has been named the chief shepherd. You are Peter and on this rock I will build my church, not churches, my church, my bride, not brides, my bride. One church, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all, St. Paul teaches in his letter to the Ephesians. If we do this, then we will, there will come times when we suffer, uh, meaning that we really strive to live um, all of our entire faith. So in the second reading, Peter is once again teaching us that, uh, and this time he teaches us to be willing to suffer for what is right, not what is wrong. I mean, his teaching is pretty much on the level of common sense, you know, but it's a supernaturally infused. If you suffer for what's wrong, so what? You should, you know, if you do something wrong, if you steal and you go to jail, you think you you should suffer. I mean, there should be a penalty, a consequence to your actions. But he says, if you uh, suffer for the right reason, and we all do for something in life, you know, we try to do the right thing, trying to stand up for our faith. He said, this is actually very pleasing to God. Does God want this to happen? No. But does it happen? We all know it does. God permits it to happen. Just as he permitted the persecution of the first Christians, the Jewish Christians, Um, and it wasn't pleasant. They had to scatter all over the place. They were persecuted. Their life was in danger, but God brought tremendous good out of this by scattering the message of the gospel through the Roman Empire. If we do this, there will come times when we suffer, have to embrace hardships. He holds up the example of the good shepherd though, 
uh, St. Peter, chapter 2, verses 22 to 25. He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. You know, that comes right from Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet. And it's some of the most profound words, really. If, I mean, the whole sermon could be given on this one line. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree. You know, I'm listening, re-listening, as I've said to some of you. Well, I've said to all of you when I say this. Uh, I'm re-listening to Bishop Sheen's Life is Worth Living series. It's a great series. Purchase it. It's well worth the money spent. Uh, he, he's, he's the master of stories, but he's also a master of theology. And he says, basically, here we have God taking his own medicine. So what is the medicine for, for sin is suffering and death. Our Lord takes his own medicine. That's how much God loves us. It's incomprehensible. No other God in mythology does this. No other God, period, or one, every, anyone who claims a certain kind of God. No God does this, but the God of Israel does this. Jesus Christ does this. He takes his own medicine. He was willing to suffer and die so that we can have life. Truly, I mean, anyways, words fall short. And I don't even have the, the vocabulary, you know, the, um, the mountain of vocabulary that others have had. That we might die, St. Peter goes on, to sin and live in righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. So we must be willing to suffer. And what, when I say this, always be aware. I'm not saying go looking for this. You know, that will just make you, I think, sick in the head if you go looking for this. But willingness to suffer is uh, when it is unavoidable. Uh, and, uh, and there's so many different kinds of suffering. This is an all-encompassing kind of an umbrella term. So please, you know, you out there, understand what I'm trying to drive at. And don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Go against our desires. We will suffer when we do that. It's, maybe that's too, um, too dramatic a term. But, you know, to go against our grain, even at the dinner table, is a kind of suffering. It's a mortification of the flesh, of, of our appetites, our food appetites, our inclinations at times in order to receive... Um, all sorts of things we will have to go against in order to be loyal to Christ, to deepen our relationship with him. Uh, <clears throat> this is the kind of encouragement that Jesus wants us to experience. That, it, that encouragement comes to us when we're willing to do this. <clears throat> you see, nothing is free. Nothing. Now, this is a fantasy the world tries to throw at us. It's a lie. Nothing is free. You want to read a really good book by uh, Dietrich, um, not von Hilt, uh, by Bonhoeffer uh, uh, called um, The Cost of Discipleship, when he talks about the concept of cheap grace. There's no such thing as cheap grace. Uh, you know, grace has been purchased for us by the death of the Son of God. So it's not to say our life is going to be misery or drudgery, but you know, we've got to kind of bring these two together, work them out, think about this. And so <clears throat> nothing is free. Nothing is achieved or received without effort, sacrifice, and a willingness to go so far, if need be, to die to ourselves that we might be loyal to God. <clears throat> when we think of these truths, we should want to be loyal and faithful to the Good Shepherd, to this Good Shepherd of ours, and ask him to help us be prepared to sacrifice our selfishness, our whims, and desires that, that may lead us to be unfaithful to him. As well, we should be very conscious of praying for priests who have, a who, uh, who have a desire to be men after Christ's own heart. And you young men, <clears throat> and maybe not so young, but who are still young of heart, consider the importance of asking the most important question in your life. It's a question I, I encourage parents you know, to try and cultivate in the lives of their children, no matter what they're going to be called to. But I'm speaking specifically to uh, young men who might be listening or maybe this will be forwarded to them and they'll listen because of a share and so on or those who may be not so young chronologically but still young of heart the most important important question is in your life is the one that the young man posed to jesus master what must i do to inherit eternal life or to put it another way what do you want me to do with my life what do you want me to do not what do i want what do you want me to do with my life keep asking it and if you demand quote unquote, demand an answer, our Lord will give it to you. He knows if you're sincere, you don't know it yet. But if you keep asking, he will purify you and he will help you to be sincere. And you will come to understand this. If Jesus doesn't have the priesthood in your plans, you should never be one. 
period. <clears throat> but if he does have it in your future, you shouldn't be anything else, period. Because you'll be the happiest person in the world if you're not supposed to be one. And you'll be the happiest person in the world if you are supposed to be one and you persevere. See, but all this stuff requires dying to ourselves so that we may have life and have it to the full. That's the way the master unfolds things for us. So ask Jesus to have a heart like unto his. Do not fear him. We have lots of fears. I've said this before. I read this somewhere a couple of weeks ago, and I was just kind of amazed by it. You know, the word do not be afraid is mentioned 365 times in the Bible, 364 maybe. That's how many days in the year there are. You think God is stupid? There's no, this, imagine every day of the year, Jesus says to us, don't be afraid. I know what you're like. Don't be afraid. Trust him, trust him. You know, he says to us, trust me, and he will not disappoint you. He's never disappointed me, even though some days I've probably disappointed him, but he's never gonna disappoint you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father wants all mankind to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth, and now we place some of our prayers and petitions before him. For the church, that we may allow Christ to bring forth abundant life within us and guide us in using our gift of life for God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all pastors, that they may faithfully imitate Christ in accompanying the people of God on their journey and encouraging their growth toward wholeness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work to restore life and bring healing, for medical personnel, for counselors, and for chaplains, that God will guide them as they journey with those in pain and preserve them from harm. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that we who have been called to follow Christ may lift to God those who cause us to suffer and refrain from threatening, insulting, and judging them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly those from COVID-19, that the Good Shepherd will welcome them into the fullness of life, especially those of our parish, and for all living parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join us in saying the prayer for vocations. O oh God, you, you have, have chosen, chosen the apostles to make, to make disciples of all nations, and by baptism and confirmation have called all of us to build up your holy church. We earnestly implore you to choose from among us, your children, many priests, blood, brothers and sisters, who will love you with their whole heart and will gladly spend their entire lives making known and loved by all. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands through the praise and glory of His name for our good and good of all His holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of the Lord, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the O Lord are destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed. And integrity of life restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. As they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition for Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and know the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise of the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs. Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, 
Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protection. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those who have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask the Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, we are all run high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, with this participation in the altar, receive the most holy body and the blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, our servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not bringing our merit, but granting us your pardon. Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have now remembered that you shed your heart, but only, only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Good Shepherd has risen, <clears throat> who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Hallelujah. Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your Most Holy Mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he who by his redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom. Make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. So just a reminder that Holy Mass will be tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, 8 a.m. So have a blessed day and we'll see you tomorrow. Regina Celi, Lejare, Alleluia, Quia Quemeruisi Portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia, Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.